All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Ben Teacher, and today we're going to learn about the Smithsonian Natural History Museum. All right. So let's get started. All right. The Smithsonian Natural History Museum. Now, before we get started, let's think. What is natural history? Here's some pictures of nature. It's about the study of animals and plants in the wild and their natural environments, the nature that they live in. So if we talk about sharks and their history, we might also talk about the oceans. If we talk about tigers or big cats, we might talk about the jungles or the savannas and the environment that they evolved and grew up in. So what can you see at a natural history museum? There are a lot of different things. What about gems? Could we see gems at a natural history museum? Sure. Gems are part of geology. We're going to learn about rocks and minerals. What about paintings? Yeah, not really. Paintings you might see at an art museum or maybe a different kind of history museum, but not a natural history museum. Butterflies. We might learn about their natural environment, how they grow up and how they've evolved. Fossils. Fossils are made up from the remains of dead animals or plant material from thousands of years ago. So we can learn a lot about natural history from fossils. And insects. We'll talk more about insects later, but this particular museum has a lot of cool insects. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you're following along in your worksheet. Where the Smithsonian, where is the Smithsonian Museum located? Well, it's in the United States, in Washington, D.C. There are a lot of museums in Washington, D.C., and this is one of the most famous. And this particular museum is also where they filmed Night at the Museum 2, where all the different exhibits come to life. All right, so what kind of exhibits are there at the Smithsonian? You can see mummies, preserved bodies, of humans and animals from ancient Egypt. Mammals. We'll talk more about mammals later, but you can learn all about different kinds of mammals like giraffes and um, bears and lions. And of course, humans are also mammals. Dinosaurs, one of the coolest things in the museum. We can learn all about the history of dinosaurs. And finally, just like we talked about, gems and minerals. You can also find at the Smithsonian. Now, before we get started, let's review some of our words. Mammal. So mammals are warm-blooded animals, which means their body temperature mostly stays the same, no matter what the temperature is like outside. They usually have hair or fur, and they usually drink their mother's milk. Ancient. Ancient just means really, really old. Here are some ancient Egyptians. We'll learn about ancient history. Here we go. Preserved. To preserve something is to keep it intact. So you might find preserved parts of an animal in a fossil, even though it, they've been there for a really, really long time. They still stayed together. Remains. Leftover parts from dead animals or plants. And we can find these in fossils, too. Here we can see the remains of a dinosaur, their bones, the remains of a plant from a long time ago, maybe the remains of a footprint or maybe a whole animal. Afterlife. So some people and some religions believe that when you die, your spirit or your soul gets to keep living. And uh, we'll learn more about that when we talk about mummies. Larva, a stage that insects go through. Pupae, which comes after the larva stage. Boop. All right. And geology. Geology. The study of rocks and minerals, the study of the earth. Minerals, natural materials that make up rocks and gems. Extinct. So when an animal species is extinct, that means that there are no more of that animal left. So the dinosaurs, of course, are extinct. There are no more dinosaurs left in the world, not living ones anyway. Extinct. All right, ancestors, so your ancestors are your family who you descended from, so your great, 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 great grandparents are your ancestors. And when we talk about animals' ancestors, we might talk about the animals that we 
evolved from thousands of years ago. Modern. Modern is kind of the opposite of ancient. Modern is new. See, we have some modern buildings here. They're not ancient at all. All right. So take a look at the vocabulary. If you haven't already, once again, make sure you follow along in your worksheet. All right, and let's, uh oh, here we go. Let's keep going and take a look inside the museum at some of the exhibits. So on the first floor, we have the mammals. So what are mammals? Well, just like we talked about, mammals are warm blooded, cold blooded animals. Their body temperature changes depending on their environment, warm blooded. They regulate their body temperature. They have hair or fur, and they drink milk from their mothers. And let's take a look at the exhibit. Let's see. Here we can see inside the Smithsonian. This is the main hall with the very famous elephant statue. And let's go to the mammal hall. You can find all this on the Smithsonian's website. So here we see, looks like a, a moose, a rhinoceros, some big cats and wildebeest. There's a lion. If we go in here, we can see Africa. They have another, there's a giraffe. They have another section uh, where you can find animals from uh, South America or Asia or North America or Australia. They have hippos, all kinds of cool animals in the mammal section. All right, so what three mammals can we see at this exhibit? You can write whatever mammals you saw. Maybe you saw a lion or maybe a tiger or maybe the moose. But go ahead and write down whatever three mammals you noticed. All right. By the way, most mammals do not lay eggs, but there are two mammals that do lay eggs. There's the platypus. All right, let's have a look at some more exhibits. So also on the first floor, we have the fossil lab. All right, we talked about fossils a little bit, but what are fossils? Fossils are leftover remains of animals. So here we have leftover remains of dinosaurs and, and uh, mollusks and different sea animals. And plants, you might find leaves or seeds or stems or something like that. And they take more than 10,000 years to form. So we can see the process of the animal dying and breaking down and decaying and eventually getting embedded in the rock for somebody to come and dig it up thousands of years later. All right. And the Hall of Fossils is where we can learn about dinosaurs. So dinosaurs are reptiles that went, just like we talked about, extinct over 66 million years ago. A modern birds, modern day birds, are uh, their ancestors are dinosaurs along with crocodiles. So even though the dinosaurs are extinct, their descendants are actually related to them and we can still see them today, birds and crocodiles. All right. Now, why did the dinosaurs go extinct? An asteroid, volcanic eruption, climate change, or all of those? It was actually all of them. Mostly we hear about the asteroid that changed life for the dinosaurs on Earth, but there were other factors that made them go extinct as well. And we can see dinosaur, oops, dinosaurs, even baby T-Rexes usually had feathers All right, next, let's go to the second floor. Now we're going to learn about geology. Just like we talked about, geology is the study of Earth, how it was made, what it's made of, how it has changed. We can see ash, meteorites, minerals, gems, and rocks in the exhibit. Also on the second floor, we have the insect zoo. Now, what are insects? So insects are bugs. We usually call them bugs with six legs and a hard outer shell. That outer shell is called an exoskeleton. If you're a human, which you are, your skeleton is on the inside. We call it an endoskeleton. But if you're an insect, which you're not, 
your skeleton or your shell that protects you is on the outside. So we call it an exoskeleton. They have different stages of life, including egg, larva, the little babies, pupae, and adults. So they look very different as they grow. Now, which of these are not insects? Hmm. Butterfly, spider, or beetles? Well, butterflies and beetles both have six legs. Spiders have eight. Spiders are not insects. They're arachnids, which is something different. All right. And now let's take a look at one more really cool exhibit. We're going to see the mummies. So for 3,000 years, what's that word for really, really old? Ancient Egyptians preserved their remains. They kept them, kept them intact so they didn't fall apart or rot. The remains of their dead to help them pass into the afterlife. So remember, we talked about the afterlife, part of their religion, uh, taught that uh, if they preserved the bodies, then their spirits could pass into the afterlife. All right. Pets and other animals were also commonly made into mummies, so it's not just humans. And let's take a look at the mummy exhibit, which you can also find on the Smithsonian's website. Here's some preserves. See that? We can see the animals. This one looks like a bull. You can see other, some small, some really big. Lots of crazy, very well-preserved animals. So you can explore that more on your own. Take a look here. We have some more animals. In the mummy exhibit, you can find cats, a crocodile, and snakes. So they really preserved a lot of animals. All right, now that we've explored the museum, let's review a little bit. And let's talk about paleontologists. That's a big word, paleontologist. A paleontologist is somebody who studies plants and animals that lived millions of years ago and looks for fossils all over the world. So here we have some paleontologists digging up some dinosaur bones. Let's talk about what they do. All right, so they use special tools to remove fossils from rock. They have special hammers, special uh, materials to help preserve what they find, special picks and brushes. From fossils, they can find out where something lived and what it looked like and even what it ate. They can learn how things evolved, how they changed over time, over thousands of years, and how the earth has changed over time as well. Maybe you've heard of archaeology, and it's similar, but they study plants rather than humans. All right, now let's take a look at, uh, at the parts of a dinosaur skeleton. So usually when paleontologists discover a set of dinosaur bones, they don't all come together like this. They come in little pieces that they have to put together. You have the tail, which we don't have. You don't have a tail like a dinosaur does. A spine, you do have a spine that runs along your back. You can feel your spine. And of course there's the skull. Of course, Everybody has a skull. That's your head bone. The talons. The talons are like the claws. Some animals have them. We really don't. Talons. And then ribs. Ribs protect your insides, your organs. You can feel your ribs right here. All right. And we talked about the cycle, the fossil cycle, a little bit. But remember, fossils are made up of remains of plants and animals. So how do they get there? Well, first, you have boop, something like a fish that dies, and this one's falling to the bottom of the ocean. It starts to decompose, its body breaks down over time until eventually there's nothing but a skeleton left over. Material will build on top of it, and it eventually gets stuck or lodged inside of a rock for hopefully paleontologists to discover many, many years later. And lastly, guys, we'll do our word search to talk about different kinds of dinosaurs. So maybe you know a little bit about dinosaurs. And if you do, which one had a very long neck? This one is the Brachiosaurus. Those really tall ones with the long necks. Which one could fly? This one's a pterodactyl. Boop. There we go. There's one that has three horns, very famous dinosaur. You've probably seen this one. This one is a triceratops. All right. Now, some dinosaurs ate mostly meat. Some of them ate mostly plants. 
there was a tiny meat eater with big claws called a velociraptor. Very scary looking dinosaurs. One had a spiky tail with big black plates. This one was called a stegos stegosaurus. And finally, the dinosaur that everybody knows, the really big ones, the really scary ones that had big heads and tiny arms. That's right, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. All right, and we can close that out. All right, good job, everybody. I hope you enjoyed learning all about the Natural History Museum. See you next time.